What's the difference between commands and events? And when should you use one over the other? Sometimes it may not seem obvious. I'll cover these two topics as well as a little bit of a hot take on if commands should fail. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design in .NET. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So I'm in my loosely called the Monolith project. Um, I'm in the end service bus branch that I have. And I'm looking at a command here, and you might have seen this before if you've seen any of my videos. And service bus has a I command interface that my command, that's how I define my command. If I look at the command itself, the I command, it just implements I message. Same thing if I look over at one of my events, I event, the definition for this is it is also a message. So at the end of the day, commands and events are both messages, but what's really the difference? So commands are just messages with the intent to perform some type of action. That action may be some type of state change or something with a side effect, but at the end of the day, it's really about you want to perform some action in the system. So when you're creating a message that's a command, you're requesting some action to be taken. Events are kind of the flip side of things. They're statements of fact. They're things that have actually happened within your system. So you're using events to publish out, to tell other parts of the system something occurred. You're gonna name events in the past tense because they are things that have actually happened within your system. So another important distinction between commands and events are consumers. With commands, commands are only gonna have one consumer. So if your producer creates a command message and sends that to the message broker, there's gonna be one consumer for it. That's it. With events, however, it's a little bit different. When your producer is publishing an event, it's sending that to the message broker, it does not know if there's consumers. It has no idea about the consumers. It doesn't care about consumers. All it knows is I'm gonna publish an event to the message broker, and if there's consumers, great, let them do what they wanna do with it. So there may not be any consumers. Maybe there's one consumer. Maybe there's three consumers. Each consumer will get the particular message. So it's a, an important distinction there between commands and events is that a command, command you're sending to the message broker for one consumer. A producer is publishing an event for zero to many consumers. So now that you know the kind of the difference between commands and events is why would you want to use one over the other? Well, it really is kind of using that definition that you know now of determining what to do. If you want to ask for something to occur, then you're gonna send a command. If you're gonna tell the system or other parts of the system that something's happened, then you wanna publish an event. So looking at my loosely coupled monolith, I have a place order command. And generally when you're naming these things for particular commands, again, they're gonna be named as actions. So I'm placing an order, that's my command. And then on the flip side for the event, it's again, after the order has been saved in my database, I'm then publishing a order placed event because I've successfully saved the data. Everything is in a consistent state now. I can publish that event to the message broker saying, okay, an order was placed in the system. So you can use commands and events in different ways, especially for workflows. So I covered this uh, pretty deeply in my Saga video about choreography versus orchestration, but I'll cover it here just quickly, is that if you're kind of using a more of an event approach to workflows, what you're gonna use is choreography. So when a uh, order was placed, we submit, uh, publish that event to the message broker, then that event is saves, goes to billing, so we can bill the customer, charge their credit card, whatever the case may be. Then the result of that command is the order build event, which then goes back to the message broker. And then maybe our warehouse picks up that event, and then it publishes its own event, saying the shipping label was created, which get back to sales so that we can mark our order as ready to ship. So we're using kind of an event workflow here, and there's no really commands involved. It's just an event kicking off something, other state change in some part of the system that's publishing other events. And, that, and we're really using events as our workflow. So orchestration is a different way to do this workflow, but it's using a combination of, of commands and events. So we're gonna use events to still be notified that certain things have occurred, but we're gonna use commands to tell other parts of the system to do something, right? So we're gonna request them to do something. So what I have here is sales, once an order is placed, it's doing the same thing, it has an order placed event. But now we have this orchestrator that picks up that event. So no longer is billing listening to that order placed event, rather our orchestrator picks it up and then it's going to send a bill order command to billing. So billing owns that bill order message, it's listening, there's only one receiver for it. 
So it's gonna go to billing. Once billing has processed the credit card or whatever it is for billing, it's still doing the same thing as it was before, which is still uh, publishing an order build event, which our orchestrator is gonna pick up. Then our orchestrator is gonna send a create shipping label to the message broker that the warehouse is the consumer for, again, because the command only has one consumer. And then it does the same thing it did before, which is create the shipping label, created. Uh, it's gonna publish that message, which our orchestrator will pick up and then mark our sales, our order as ready to ship. So orchestration is a combination of using commands and events. Choreography is just kind of using events as the workflow. So I don't know if this is really a hot take, but I watched a video that I thought was a hot take at the time that Udi Dahan had in a portion of a talk he was doing talking about whether commands uh, can fail. And through that video, I could relate a lot to examples that I've been in. And it's not talking about the superficial validation or the infrastructure, let's say your database is down or whatever the case may be, not in that sense of failure because your messaging library and infrastructure should be dealing with retries and all that stuff. And not about kind of that superficial, is the message formatted correctly? Does it have all the required properties, et cetera? But more about kind of the, the business logic when you are, are processing a message, does the particular state of the system um, is in a place where you can actually process that command? So I'll give you an example of why I also have kind of in that notion of, I don't think command should actually fail. So the example I have here is very similar to what Udi was showing in this example, and actually was very similar to the situation I've been in. So this is my place order handler where I'm consuming the place order command. And I have this warehouse inventory uh, interface that I'm injecting. And what I'm doing here is I have this business logic that's stating really what it's doing behind the scenes is it's checking to see for all the products on a particular order, does the warehouse have that product actually available? Do we have that product in the warehouse? Because if we don't, then we can't create this order. That's essentially what this business logic um, is designed to do. But if we're saying that commands can't fail, then what do we do with this if statement? So I think there's three things to really think about um, when we're trying to remove this if statement to not have this command fail, is that this was gonna fail no matter what actually, because if we're talking about concurrency and you have multiple orders, you have multiple um, uh, place order uh, commands being processed at any given time, you could each individually commands that are processing pass this piece of code and then each add uh, an order to an items that end up becoming no longer available. If we have one order that comes in that basically takes the remaining quantity available and then it creates this order, but the other one was concurrently happening at the same time, you're gonna end up with multiple orders that um, are, you're gonna be basically overselling. The second thing to really think about here is, is overselling actually even an issue? Um, so what I mean is more in the own, your own domain that you're in is asking these questions of do the things you think or that you have these business logic that matter actually matter? Because in the case of a warehouse that I worked in, overselling actually wasn't a sales problem, it was a purchasing problem. So because of things like this and because of the quantity on hand, um, being able to get updated in multiple places, not just this place order, there's other parts of the system that can change the quantity on hand. So you have multiple actors affecting what that quantity is. You can't really ever um, guarantee that you're not gonna oversell. So because of that, the business already is well aware of it in that domain and they have other things in place to deal with overselling. So hopefully I cleared up a little bit the difference between commands and events, where you use commands, where you use events. Again, dived in a little bit deeper in my video about sagas and about choreography and orchestration and a little bit of a hot take and let me know your thoughts on whether commands can fail. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed already and are interested in software architecture and design, make sure to subscribe. Thanks.